young brother was downright eloquent with his misinformed soliloquy. He said using nigger affectionately among ourselves takes the negativity out of the word. But there's no other race of people can use it ever but us. <laughs> and you thought that kind of reasoning existed only in the Twilight Zone. Then again, the Twilight Zone was a TV show. And the plight of black America is tragic reality. Somebody said the revolution would not be televised. They didn't say anything about our devolution, which is well documented. Our divine and national movement stand for the Pacific Grand Principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And the prophet them applied to all loyal, faithful, Moors, members, and the American citizens to help him in his great uplifting acts of uplifting fallen humanity among the Asiatic race and nation. For he has suffered much and severely in the past through misunderstanding of what the movement was dedicated to. It is the great God Allah alone that guides the destiny of this divine and national movement. I know that all true American citizens are identified by national and national decent name in order to answer and apply to the free national constitution of this free national republic of the United States of America. The Prophet Noble Drew Ali is going to help this national government. For without a free national name with the decent flag of your forefathers, there is not a national divine title of the government in which you live. This is from your true and divine founder, Prophet Noble Drew Ali, to all American citizens and foreign sympathizers. Prophet Noble Drew Ali is the founder. At this time, I would like to recite the Moorish American prayer, the source from which Moorish Americans draw their strength. Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, Drew Ali, amen. First off, I'd like to rise, circling the camel's hump, giving praise to Allah, the author, the creator, the governor of the world, almighty, eternal, and incomprehensible, the one who stretched forth the heaven with his hand, who have described with his fingers the courses of the stars, who said it bounds to the ocean that it cannot pass and said to the stormy winds, be still. I'd like to give on to the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, talking about none other than our holy and the luscious prophet, noble Drew Ali. I'd like to give on to prophet noble Drew Ali because it was he who reached down into the watery grave of hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, and everything that harms and set you and me back upright on our feet again. I'd like to give on to the forerunner to the prophet, Nova Drew Ali, Marcus Mosai Garvey. I'd like to give on to Marcus Mosai Garvey because this brother had to have pure thoughts in order to pave the way for love. I'd like to give on to all officials in the Morris Science Temple of America, here, there, and everywhere. I'd like to give honor to all bodies in the Morris Science Temple of America, there and everywhere, and honor to all of those that have and will aid and assist us in this, our divine and gigantic mission, the uplifting of fallen humanity. I'd like to give honor to all literature pertaining to Islam in the Morris Science Temple of America. I'd like to give on to our two flags, the flag of our origin and the flag of our birth. Moreover, honor to our charter that gives us the right to function in these United States and throughout the world without molestation 
or ridicule of any kind. And last but not least, I'd like to give a special honor to Temple Two here in Portland, Oregon. I'd like to give honor to Temple Two here in Portland, Oregon, because Temple Two have taken the Dred Scott decision. And when they took the Dred Scott decision, as they investigated it and studied it, they see that it go along with the Kansas and Nebraska Act, the Missouri Compromise, and the Lucy and the Purchase. At this time, I'd like to read from the Moorish Holy Quran, the Book of the Seven Seals. The nun was able to open and read from his sacred pages the messages of purity and love. And this evening, I want to read from chapter 15. I want to read from chapter 15, and it's read on this wise. Divine ministry of Jesus. Jesus goes to the wilderness for self-examination, where he remains 40 days, is subjected to three temptations. He overcomes, returns to the camp of John, and begin teaching. The harbinger has paved the way. The Logos has been introduced to men as love made manifest, and he now must begin his divine ministry. And he went forth into the wilderness to be alone with the law, that he might look into his inner heart and note his strength and worthiness. And with himself he talked, he said, My lower self is strong. By many ties I am bound down to carnal life. Have I the strength to overcome and give my life a willing sacrifice for men? When I should stand before the face of men and they demand a proof of my messiahship, what will I say? And then the tempter came and said, If you be the son of Allah, command these stones to turn to bread. And Jesus said, Who is it that demands a test? It is no sign that one is the son of Allah because he does a miracle. The devil can do mighty things. Did not the Gentile magician do great things before the Pharaoh? My words and deeds in all the walks of life shall be the proof of my Messiahship. And then the tempter said, If you will go into Jerusalem and from the temple pinnacle cast down yourself to earth, the people will believe you are the Messiah sent from a law. This you can surely do. For did not David say he gives his angels charge concerning you? And with their hands will they uphold, lest you shall fall. And Jesus said, I will not tempt the Lord my God Allah. And then the tempter said, Look forth upon the world. Behold his honors and his fame. Behold its pleasures and its wealth. If you will give your life to these, they shall be yours. But Jesus said, Away from me, all tempting thoughts. My heart is fixed. I sprung this carnal self with all its vain ambitions and its pride. For 40 days did Jesus wrestle with his carnal self. His higher self prevailed. He then was hungry, but his friends had found him, and they ministered to him. Then Jesus left the wilderness, and in the consciousness of holy breath, he came into the camp of John and taught. Thus we just had a reading of the book of the seven seals, divinely prepared by our holy prophet Nova Ali for our earthly and our divine salvation. Right now, I want to talk to you on the spiritual side. I want to talk to you on the spiritual side, and then I'm going to get to you with the national side, because Drew Ali say national and divine movement. He didn't say just the national movement or just the divine movement. 
So I'm not going to bump my head and say that he just said the divine movement, nor am I going to bump my head and say I'm just on the national side. I'm going to do what Drew Ali said because he gave us two of them. He gave us a national side and he gave us a divine side. And the European was kind of messed up when he done that because the European was said that we were three-fifths of a man. And I agreed with that after I learned about Drew Ali. And we was three-fifths of a man because there was two things that was missing. And the two things that was missing, because I say it all the time, all day long in mathematics, five-fifths is a whole. So we were three-fifths because there was two-fifths that was taken away from us during the advent of slavery. One of them was our religion, which is Islamism. And our faith is something different. Because Drew Ali asked all the Moorish America, what is our religion? But my faith might be different from yours, and we're going to get into this today. So I read from chapter 15 in our Moorish Holy Quran. And in chapter 15, it was talking about Jesus. And it said Jesus went into the wilderness for self-examination where he remained 40 days. And when he was in the wilderness for 40 days, he was subjected to three temptations. Now, I'm not going to talk about on this show right here what the three temptations are because the Moorish Americans always talk about these three temptations in Sunday school. And being that you have a lot of people say they're not temple Moors, I don't want to give you this kind of rhetoric about what we are talking about in chapter 15. So now Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And in the Morris Science Temple of America, we have what is known as the four sacred schools of thought. And the four sacred schools of thought is Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius. These are the four prophets that the Holy Prophet Nova Drew Ali of 1913 gave us. And he said also, when you look at those four, he said, I'm five times greater than any prophet that have come before me. So in this era of time, Noble Drew Ali is the one that's standing in the middle of the circle. Now, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius is in the circle because it's not but one spirit. Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius, and Noble Drew Ali are all of the same spirit. There's a brotherhood, and there's a prophethood. And those that's a part of the brotherhood, our job is to get behind the prophet and follow him to a destiny which is not uncertain nor unknown. So when Jesus uh, and all of God's prophets went into the wilderness for self-examination, what did they carry with them? They carried the four sacred schools of thought. See, here's your four right here. Jesus. Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius. Your four things is your spirit. So now Jesus in the wilderness for self-examination for 40 days and 40 nights. So we're talking about the wilderness now. If Jesus gave us the four sacred schools of thought to take within the wilderness, the wilderness is not when you look at trees and berries and flowers. The, the wilderness is within yourself. And when you go into yourself, you start talking to yourself. You said, by many times I'm bound down to carnal life. Have I the strength to overcome and give my life a willing sacrifice for men? And this is what Noble Drew Ali brought to the Moorish Americans. See, he brought us a divine creed. He told us in, about Jesus in chapter 15, he said, you had to overcome those three temptations. And until we overcome those three temptations that's in chapter 15, we're not close to God. Because the book say, through carnal thoughts and words and deeds, man told himself away from Allah, he debased himself. So if you have those three temptations still within your life, then you have debased yourself from God. And the only way that you could come back with God in unity with God, you got to live according to the principles of God. And the principles in this era of time is love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. When you're in the Mars, you call it the Kalima Shahada. If you live that, you can walk with God. If you're in the church and you're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, you could deal with that. Now, I'm not going to mention the Jew 
because I'm going to talk about those who call themselves Jew today. I don't want to mention Jew, and I don't want to talk about the Jewish prayer. A lot of things I won't, don't want to talk about when it's in reference to the Jew because we're talking about Esau and Jacob. And when you begin to talk about Esau and Jacob, it's talking about one of them, two brothers, one of them sold the other birthright out. And when you sold your birthright out, well, really, we gave our birthright away. And Drew Ali say, you gave your birthright away just to gratify your lower self. So we gave our, lower, our, our, our birthright away just to gratify our lower self. And when you're talking about your lower self, that's the other self. Because we have two selves. There's a higher self and there's a lower self. But in all the walls of Egypt, it did not have no thyselves. Didn't have no S on it. It was singular. It wasn't plural. So when he said know thyself, he's talking about your higher self. Because your higher self uh, is human spirit clothed with soul made in the form of a law. Your lower self is your carnal self. Is your body of desires is a reflection of your higher self, but it's distorted by the murky ethers of the flesh. So now we're talking about two selves, and you got to crush one. And the one that you have to crush is your lower self. You have to crush your lower self and tame your higher self to your purpose. And for what purpose was the Moral Science Temple of America founded? For the uplifting of fallen humanity. And how did the prophet begin to uplift the Moral Science By teaching them to be themselves. Now we're talking about fallen humanity. And who is fallen humanity? We fell from the spiritual plane to the plane of soul to the plane of things made manifest. Now when you begin to talk about the spirit plane, you're talking about the, your first heaven. When you begin to talk about the plane of soul, you're talking about your second heaven. And when you begin to talk about the plane of things made manifest, you're talking about third heaven. So what we have to do in the Moy Science Temple of America as we teach our people to be themselves, we have to make heaven right down here on earth. On this plane of things made manifest, we got to make heaven. And how do we do that? By living according to the curriculum that the holy prophet, Noble Jew Ali, gave us because it was he and only he who hooked us back up with the family of nations. I was talking to the treasurer today. Came by my house this morning. And the treasurer used to be uh, a follower of Wart Dean Muhammad. And I was letting him know that one thing that Wart Dean Muhammad had on his credit card was when he is around 1976 or 77, he told all of the brothers after Elijah had passed. And uh, he told all of the brothers and sisters to change their name. And then some of my friends would name uh, uh, Abu and, and Kareem and, and Raouf. I mean, everybody was changing their name. But he told the sisters. He said, sister, change your name. But if your name is Ruth, don't change that. And the reason why he told the sisters not to change Ruth, because see, everybody knows what the truth is about man. All the leaders know the truth about man. And there's a lot of leaders was told, you could say we the, the, the devil, you could call us anything that you want, just don't tell the people that they have a nationality. I'll be whatever you want, because if you tell the people that they have a nationality, then that means that they are hooked back up with the family of nations. I remember the Moors in the Moorish Science Temple, those that raised me. They was telling me, and they were saying so emphatically that they remember a time when the red flag with the five-pointed green star in the center was not being flown in Morocco. They remember that. And they used to teach so strong in the Moorish Science Temple of America because they were telling the world that we have a flag that's flying here in the United States that's not being flown in Morocco. And now we're saying that our flag was flying here in the United States when it wasn't even being flown in Morocco. And because Allah, who is the great God Allah, gave Jew Ali that thought, about going to Woodrow Wilson, then in 1948, they came up with the other flag. 
And when they came up with that flag, this is where Esau and Jacob took his rise. I'm going to reiterate it because I taught it in Sunday school and in Holy Day. There was a brother by the name of uh, Sammy Davis Jr. And Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, was telling all of the world that he was a Jew. And everybody looked at Sammy Davis Jr. like he was crazy. Said, this man crazy telling me Jew, but he could be that day because he was the only age out there was with the rat pack in there. So he was getting some money and doing a lot of other things. So those that called themselves Jew, what they did with, Steve, uh, with uh, Sammy David Jr., they all took the blood test. And when they all took the blood test, then what did come up? It came up that Sammy Davis Jr. was the one that was a Jew, and the rest of them come from Germany, Scotland, and all these other different places. Because when you begin to understand the essence of the Berlin Conference, I talk about it every week. When you begin to understand the Greek burned gift, when you begin to understand uh, Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, all the books that's in the Vatican today, or when they begin to talk about there's a royal family and you are not in the royal blood. Because when you begin to talk about the royal family, what are you talking about? You're talking about the house of David. Now, let me go back to uh, Wart D. Muhammad. Let me read Act 6 of our divine constitution and bylaws. And Drew Ali told the Moors this. He said, with us, all members must proclaim their nationality. And we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed. That they may know that they are part and departure of this said government. And know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians. Because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now. And all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained noble Jew Ali the prophet to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Now I want us to hold that thought. Because it say the Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Now, in our questionnaire, 101, one of them is the fork, one of them is the spoon, and the one, the zero, is your plate. So this is the last supper. Dig in and eat. And when you begin to look into this is uh, 101 question. Drew Ali asked us something. He said, will you give in brief the line genealogy through which Jesus came? And said, some of the great fathers through which Jesus came are Abraham, Boaz by Ruth, Jesse, King David, Solomon, Hezekiah, and Joseph by Mary. Now, it ain't but seven. You might say it's nine, but it ain't for seven. And the reason why they say Boaz by Ruth and Joseph by Mary, because we had to come through the door twice through the woman. Joseph came through the door through Mary. Boaz came through the door through Ruth. That's why I say Boaz by Ruth and Joseph by Mary. So it ain't for one. When you say Boaz by Ruth, one. Joseph by Mary, one. It ain't for seven. Seven is a number of perfection. We are all striving to reach perfection. Now, we was in a meeting this morning. And one of the brothers said he's some kind of sheik. And he said that they gave him some kind of paperwork. But let me share this with you. We was reading the book that Drew Ali gave us. And it was talking about some people that was in a den. And when they was in a den, inside this den, it was a lot of hissing sounds. Snakes, scorpions, and all these different sounds that you heard in the, in the den. And a lot of us think that we're in a chamber, but we are in a den. And the difference between a chamber and a den, if you're in a chamber 
and somebody in that chamber is not of the spirit of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and doing things diametrically opposed to what God said do, then you're living in a den. You're not in a chamber. You're of a different spirit. It's a try the spirit. Test the spirit and see are you from the same spirit. Because a lot of times we take on the same attributes, the same thought pattern of those of whom we got this spirit from, just like the prophet. I was listening to a young brother, and I didn't comment. He said the prophet told the more. He said get a good European education. And once you get a U good European education, then I can use you. So when he said that, we all start running the school to become doctors, to become lawyers, become mathematicians. And then the sheik took us in the room. And when he took us into the room, he asked us, did we know anything about Ognaton or did we know anything about Imhotep? And I say, yeah, we're reading about Ognaton and Imhotep. And when you begin to talk about those two brothers, one of them is the father of mathematics. One of them is the father of medicine. So both of these brothers come out of Egypt. And if both of these brothers come out of Egypt, then if I go to school to be a doctor, <laughs> if I go to school to be a mathematician, that's not European. Because it come out of Europe. And the whole world was called Asia at one time. In our holy day, we were talking about the seven churches that was in Asia. And the reason why it said the seven churches that was in Asia, because at that time, Europe was not even in existence. That's why we're talking about the continental drift. We're talking about the Pangea. And these are lessons that we have now. All of our brothers are supposed to be conscious. And all of our sisters who are supposed to be conscious. What do we do? We call the European nation Jews. We call the European Jews. Now, Hitler. Hitler supposed to kill a lot of Jews. Well, it's your fault because he was looking at me. He wanted the history so he can come get me, but what he did was you stole the birthright saying that you was me, and he killed all of y'all and put you in those ghetto concentration camps. See, when you would talk about the word ghetto, I hear a lot of brothers and sisters always talking about the word ghetto. Ghetto was a word that came out of Germany. And ghetto was dealing with the concentration camps. So when you was in the concentration camp, you was in the ghetto. So the Europeans took the same word and turned around on us. When you living in the ghetto, when you living in an urban community, he said you in the concentration camp. And that's where you are right now, you in slavery. So Noah Jew Ali came with a methodology that was conducive to our growth and development, and he hooked us back up with the family of nations. He bought us something that nobody else had. He bought us a nationality. Nobody else bought you and I a nationality. And when you begin to talk about Jew Ali, you know, we say in the, in the chamber, in the, uh, I mean in the Morris Science Temple, put your record on the table and step back. You ain't got to do no talking because whatever you do, your record speak for itself. And we all got a lot of records. That's why when you go up to Jordan and it's time for you to talk to the great God Allah, I can't stand with you. I can only uh, stand beside you, but I can't stand for you, nor can I stand with you because the book say every teller must stand on his own bottom and every tongue must confess his own. That's why I say, what is our religion? Our religion is Islamism. But I don't know what you do with our religion. But whatever you do with your religion, it turns into your faith. Because faith is the surety of the omnipotence of Allah and man. See? So if you have faith, then that means that there's a surety. See? Because let me share this with you. I got a friend of mine, and he ain't been drinking in 20 years. And he go to the AA on Wednesday night and say, my name is Joe Blow, and I'm an alcoholic. That don't make sense to me. Because when you stop doing a thing, you're no longer that. But when you keep saying this, then it's something they call subliminal seduction. Subliminal seduction is something that goes into your subconscious mind. 
and that brings about mental slavery. So if I stop doing something and don't do it no more, say, I don't need that. If I want to stop drinking wine, then I'm going to stop. I don't need to go to no meeting, nobody tell me to do this, because you're going to have to do it on your own. When you talk to God, you're going to have to talk to God. By solid meditation, he set by a flowing spring, and it was on a holy day. This is time here. The nearest place to meet Allah is in the heart. The heart, we're not talking about the heart that pump blood. See, because it's not in flesh to think, and it's not in bones to reason. So if you're talking about the nearest place to meet Allah is in the physical, then this is going to pass and be no more. But man is not the body, nor the soul. He is a spirit and a part of Allah. Now, let me get back into Acts 6. It says the Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites. I read the genealogy. And we're talking about the ancient Moabites. Let's start with Ruth. Because they say that uh, Ruth's husband died. And Ruth's husband died. She was lingering with her mother-in-law. You know, then they were talking about Ruth and Naomi and Oprah. And they were talking about all these when you look into uh, the book of Ruth. But listen to this. Because when the sheep told me that, it made a lot of sense. When a woman, husband, is calling itself Negro, colored, and black. When a woman's husband is not honoring the creed and principles of his mothers and fathers and straying after the gods of Europe, of whom he knew nothing of, you know when you do that, you are dead. In all the world, there's two things. One is living and the other is dead. So now, the Moabite nation, we lost everything that we had. We lost our mind, and we lost. And remember uh, the Greeks? And you're talking about the Greek burned gifts, and you're talking about the Trojan horse, and how at night how the soldiers got in there, and that night they came out the horse. A lot of these lessons only can apply to you and me because we, the descendants, of the ancient Moabites, we had a national name when first brought to these shores in the early part of the 17th century. And if so, what was it? Over 2,000 years ago, Chinese was Chinese. Over 2,000 years ago, Vietnamese was Vietnamese. Over 2,000 years ago, you are who you supposed to be today. But now, through mental slavery, which we now have, we accepted something that has nothing to do with you. Man, we're laughed upon every day. The nations of the earth today are laughing at us. But I want to get back to Ward D. Muhammad. Ward D. Muhammad, it was another name that he used too. And as you investigate what I'm saying to you now, you will see. But he told all of the sisters that if you have roof, keep it. Because once you put that T on roof, you ain't getting nothing but the absolute truth. T-R-U-T-H. And roof is nothing but the truth because she was the Moabite. And all these people are talking about King David. All of these people are talking about Solomon. All these people are talking about Jesus. And how can you do that? Because he's not of the same blood that you are of. And we are so crossed up through the European nations, we don't see Moses, we don't see David, we don't see Solomon as a part of our genealogy. They took Moses, those who call themselves Jew. They took Moses. They done took our Moses and claimed him. And those who are Christians took our Jesus and claimed them when both of those brothers come out of Africa. And both of them don't get along. So now you got those who call themselves Catholics, and then you call themselves who call themselves Christian. They say that Mary and Jesus, they say that Jesus was born a virgin birth. They say that Joseph and Mary did not have sexual relationship. 
Say, God, say, Moses, I'm going to bless you, Jesus and Joseph, because, you know, he came through the door. Joseph came through the door through Mary, and her mother Anna had a lot to say about some things. But when they came through the door, both of them were studying the word of God. And both of them was a part of our chamber. At that time, we call it, what do we call the chamber? We call it the Essene Brotherhood from the East. And when you look at the Essene Brotherhood from the East, which is the Great White Brotherhood, because we all was a part of the Great White Brotherhood, because white means purity. Purity means God, and God means the ruler of the land. So we're a part of the Great White Brotherhood. So there was women and men that was favoring God, living according to God, walking with God, walking in the fruits of the Spirit, walking in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So they had a child. The child was born of virgin birth. And the child was born of virgin birth because it come through an uncursed vessel. It didn't come through a vessel of hate, slander, looters, murder, theft, and everything that harms. It didn't come through a vessel of Negro, color, black, and Ethiopian. So when you begin to talk about a virgin, a virgin is one who have been untouched, one who have been pure, and Joseph being a righteous man, and Mary being a righteous woman. And they had a child, Jesus, he was sheltered. They sheltered him. They sent him to school. They kept him out of the things of the world. They kept him and put him in all. Matter of fact, they had Jesus. Jesus was so sharp one time, his mother and them were looking for him. They said, Jesus, where you at, man? Say, we sought many days for you. We thought so great harm had overtaken you. And Jesus said, hold up. Come on now. Me, I'm in the temple disputing with the doctors of the law. He didn't say arguing that. Jesus don't do no arguing. Moshe Michael don't do no arguing. We don't do no debating. We don't do none of that because truth don't need no support. So Jesus say, I'm in the temple disputing with the doctors of the law. Some of that stuff he was talking about, the burnt offerings and a lot of other different things that Jesus was in there talking to them elders about. But I learned then that when you begin to talk about elder, say, Jesus was 12 years old, younger than all of his disciples, but he carried the signs. So he was the elder. So when you begin to talk about elder, you're talking about one of wisdom. Just because somebody is younger than you don't mean that you are their elder because uh, you have elders and you have an elderly. Me, I'm just an old elder. I'm over 65. 66, 67, I'm over the old man, and Allah just kept me around because he had favor, something for me to do, you know. But it wasn't had nothing to do with me because he protect fools and babies, and I'm one of the fools that he protected. So by him protecting me, it gave me an opportunity and is giving me the opportunity to be able to get into my lessons. And one of the lessons that we went into today, because we're looking at Act 1. And Act 1 says that the Grand Sheik and the Chairman of the Morris Science Temple of America is empowered to make law and enforce laws with the systems of the Prophet and the Grand Body of the Morris Science Temple of America. Now, we have the Divine Constitution and Bylaws. And I have a problem with it because I want to know right now after I hear all this talk, what is the Constitution and what is the bylaw? And I hear a lot of different lessons that's given to me. I even hear when it say the Grand Sheik and the Chairman. I hear a lot of talk about that. But when you begin to say the divine Constitution and bylaw, Act 1 is the Constitution. And why is Act 1 the Constitution? Because it's the preamble. It's the preamble. It talks about we the people, who is the form of more perfect union, etc. All that right, talk about the system grand sheik. It talks about the grand body. And the grand body are not those who come and go. I want to reiterate that because we was in a conversation this morning and we were talking about recitation. There's no sign of elevation. And what do that mean? You could be in the Morris Scientific 100 years. 
and the brother could be in the Morris Science Temple of America three years. And the one that's been in the Morris Science Temple three years could have more knowledge than the one that's been in there 21 years. See, because it comes with your elevation. It comes with your spirit. It don't mean that. Now you got a lot of brothers. I'm going to use myself, for example, because I can't use nobody else. I got to use myself. I went through a lot of trials and tribulations in my life, trying to overcome some seven tests, trying to deal with those three temptations that Jesus had to overcome in chapter 15. But while I was going through my trials and tribulations, I know not to go to the Sunni community. I know not to go to the so-called Jewish community. I know not to go back to the church. I know that I have to stay right here in the Morris Science Temple of America and work with these uh, foes that I have because Drew Ali is a doctor. He is a professor who bought me things that will make me a better citizen. That's what Drew Ali said. Make me a better human being. And I become human when I took on form and pigmentation. So we have a divine spirit and we have a human spirit. But human spirit is clothed in soul made in the form of a law. So now, I was looking at a book. And I was up this dude, Paul, Pastor Paul, Paul and them over there, you know, in the Bible. You know, and Paul and them was talking about the, the letters and things in the book of Ephesians. And every time I go somewhere and I see somebody that has something up there with Ephesians, they also have one of them Roman soldiers and dressed in a lot of armor around them and saying that this dude got on the whole armor of God. And when you talk about uh, uh, Ephesians 6.12, it said we wrestle not against uh, principality, but we're talking about wickedness in high places. And now that we're talking about wickedness in high places, all week long they had on social media about the priests. Uh, how priests got uh, sent to jail because of the, the altar boys. And the, see, those things like that is something that we don't even supposed to talk about. We know about Trump. We know about what's transpiring with us as a people in this community. But the reason why we're still going through the thing that we're going through because we still want to be in mental slavery. We know the truth, and we know that the truth will set us free. But we don't want to let it go. We want to stay in the church. We want to still take on the names and principles that delude the slavery. And then we want to take on somebody else's religion. Would you all tell you that the foundation of Christianity began in Rome? And it was the Roman nations that founded the first church of whom crucified Jesus of Nazareth for seeking to redeem his people from under the Roman yoke and law. But a brother, see a sister, and now European, and they got a big old demonstration back there, they're going to run you right up into the church. Or a sister, they see a, a European that eat real good, or you see a European that that demonstration hang, and you're going to run over there with them. And you forget all about your forefathers and your foremothers. And we got to live for them because they live through us. I was telling uh, the Moors in the temple that in D.C. we had something called uh, African Ocean Day. And in the African Ocean Day is when all the brothers and the sisters will go to Virginia Beach or whatever beach that we would go to this year, and we go to the beach, we have a, a celebration. And the celebration was us coming across uh, the, 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 the mental, coming across, and we went out to the water to be able to, you know, say a prayer. So after the prayer, I'm just coming from the preparation center. They had uh, everybody, you want to say something? And all the brothers got up and the sister and thanking the law for it. So they said, Lynn Bay, you got something? I said, yeah. I said, praise our law. I said, praise our law for this great day. See, it ain't like it used to be now, sister. Back in the day, in the Morris Island Temple, sister wore the dress all the way down to, uh, to, to the ankles. But now, the sisters, they wear men's dresses and shorts and everything. Show, they do all that now. But it wasn't like that back because now we in the summer like Earl. And I got up, I said, praise our Lord. I said, all year long, we around here looking at the sister with the long dresses on. But now we at uh, the... Uh, of the water, and all the sisters got their bathing suits on, and they swimming. I say, praise our Lord. 
And one of the brothers, now listen, babe, you don't have to talk like that because we religious. Let me go here with that. Everybody started laughing because they was happy too. I heard the brothers. I heard the brothers saying the same thing. But we want to be real with this thing. We want to be so real with it that I'm going to share this with you. I had a friend of mine named Clee McMillan Bay. Clee McMillan Bay passed for him now. <laughs> he to be close to brother uh, Matthew Zill, so that's how we, we got real close, calling him Yero. And Yero changed his name. Yero changed his name because he had a family member that did something that he shouldn't have done. And when he did what he wasn't supposed to do, uh, 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 the most say, I changed my name because I don't want to be associated with that no more because that was disrespectful to the family. But what we do as Marsh America, we go to court, and when we go to court and when we great go home, they'll tell us, say, do you have a family member that's been incarcerated before? They say, yeah. They say, I don't care if it's your brother. I don't care if it's your uncle, even your mother. You can't go around them. Because you both are ex-offenders. And we have a program that all ex-offenders stay away from each other. And we were looking at that. And we were looking at it real hard, and we was fighting against it. And then when I was talking to Yero, and he gave me that lesson, I learned that there was a brother, that a, a brother, they want, some brothers wanted to get, get at him and take his phone. I said, why would you do that to that brother? Because he ain't right. He told on my brother. I said, your brother hot. You protect your brother, though. It's all right with your brother. It's all right with your family to be hot and tell on somebody. But when somebody else do it, it ain't right. So that's why it tells us to worship under our own vine and fig tree. In the church, they got what is known as the body of Christ. And those that live in the law of Jesus, they are part of the body of Christ. They are of that family. So when you begin to talk about family, my mother always told us in our family, if your brother or your sister's wrong, don't stand with them. Only stand with the truth. And then she old. Oh, she was born way back then. And I'm glad she gave me that lesson because that's the same thing that we see in the Morris Science Temple of America. We say that we sheiks. We say that we divine ministers. But every day when people see us, we are with the same people that's tearing down our community. He said, this is my man over here. This is my man over there. He give me a donation over here. He give me a donation over there. But something is wrong with the spirit. Because if you say that you one with God and you are of that spirit and you are around people that's not of that spirit, then something wrong. So we need to look at ourselves again. Because me, I'm trying to get right because I'm wrong. I've been serving two masters at the same time. I've been doing it. And I lived that life. None can serve two masters at the same time. You all each other us about straddling the fence. So now what we got to understand, when you're trying to get right with the great God Allah, if you know people that's doing things that's diametrically opposed to the law, you got to get away from them. See, this Jesus right here. Jesus they say humanity when you see the sister. You see the sister, and on it is written humanity because when you uplift the brother, you uplift the individual. But when you uplift the sister, you uplift the nation because through her womb, humanity comes. But see right here, this is not just Drew Ali lifting up the sister. Drew Ali is lifting up the whole world. They even had a song. So he got the whole world in his hand. He got you and me, sister, in his hand. He got you and me, brother, in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. So when you begin to talk about your brother, because they're known as a brotherhood, and there's what is known as a sisterhood. Now behind brother and behind sister, there's what is known as a hood. And the hood is what you put over you. You put the hood over you because this hood is what protects you in your infancy and your ignorance. I remember when I was a boy. Drew Ali said in this book here, who remember himself a boy. I was telling somebody the other day that my mother sent me to the Elks home on, on Florida, Rhode Island, Florida Avenue, wherever it was, and I went in there, and I was going to become a member. 
but she showed me how to make a left. She said, that's your left over there with this hand, and this your right. But when I got there, the man told me, left, right, left, right, and I ain't know my left from my right. I thought I was turning left, and I was turning to my right. So who remember himself a boy? So you got to humble yourself. We got to humble ourselves and remember from which we come. And in order to build the temple of perfected man, we got to have those with us that's striving to reach perfection. And this is what this literature is. Now, when you go into this Moorish Quran, and it says Jesus goes into the wilderness for self-examination, where he remains 40 days, is subjected to three temptations. We was taught that what you do, you take Jesus' name away and put your name there. Say, Brother Eel or Sister Bay is going into the wilderness for self-examination. That means that you are taking whatever chapter is here and what Jesus went through, you have to go through the same thing Jesus went through. A lot of people talk about Jesus, but from the east, comes all life. And Jesus means justice. And justice is dealing upright, equal, and fair. And once you become of that spirit that you could deal upright, equal, and fair, then you're getting closer to the kingdom of heaven. Because when we talk about heaven, we're not talking about a place of mercy to bound or a place to be reached. We're talking about a state of mind. Allah never made a heaven for man. He never made a hell. We are creators and make our own. And they tell me, when you die, you go to heaven. And we agree with that here at Temple 2. Because once you proclaim your nationality, then you have died a death. You have died a death and you've been reborn again. That's why in the chapter, it talks about Jesus. When they put Jesus in the tomb. And when they say they put Jesus in the tomb, they, Jesus was talking. And he said, they put me in the tomb, and then I wrestled with the conquerors of men. I conquered death. Now, Jesus brought me dead, but he talking. He said, I brought immortality to life. I painted on the walls a time a rainbow for the sons of men. And what I've done, all men can do. And the gospel of the resurrection of the dead is not confined to the Jew or Greek. It is the heritage of every man of every time and climb, and I'm here a demonstrator of the power of man. So now, when Jesus was in the tomb and he took the mighty stone that was at the tomb door and cast it into the, the river as though it was a pebble. So that big stone that's at the door of your mind and my mind through the teachers of the prophet, Noble Juali, we could crush, take that big stone, throw it aside, and live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and it would not be nothing but a pebble. Now let me share this with you too. Noah had an ark, and Noah's ark rested in Mount Arak in Asiatic Turkey. You got an Asiatic Turkey, and you have a European Turkey. Now, when it says Noah's ark rested at Mount Arak in Asiatic Turkey, now, you're talking about the Ottoman Turks. Now, you know about 1453 Byzantine at the Byzantine Empire. And you had a lot of Muslims that was in Turkey. And you had a lot of Christians that was in Turkey. But the Muslims that was in Turkey stayed Asiatic. And the Christians that was in Turkey, they became European. See, there was a time when the whole world was called Asia. I'm going back to the point that I told you that's in the Bible. It talked about the seven churches that was in Asia. And the reason why that was because Europe was not even in existence. All this stuff is before. We know who the Jews are. We know who the uh, royal blood is. We know one stole our birthright. But because of mental slavery and because of our weaknesses, we just don't want to let these things go. We don't want to stand up. We want to keep craving after our carnal desires and looking to somebody else because we don't want to stand on our own. I met a lot of Moorish Americans. And a lot of brothers and sisters that were sheiks and sheikas, they no longer around no more, but I like to give honor to them for the lift that they did stay. Because, you know, when you say you're a Moorish American, you're rolling. 
Because one thing, you don't have no support from uh, Saudi Arabia. And you don't have no support from all those over there. Because all those brothers and all those sisters that's in them Islamic communities that look just like me, you are dealing, too, with the Berlin Conference. You are dealing with the Berlin Conference because you tell me that your nationality is your religion. And that don't make sense. That's so unintelligent. But through the Berlin Conference, that's where you are. So now you saying that Muhammad is the last and the seal of the prophet. Now I'm going to get back to this because I'm Muslim, but I wear fads. This fads don't have nothing to do with religion. This fads have a lot to do with our custom. And custom do not alter the nature of truth, neither the opinion of man to establish justice. So the customs have nothing to do with truth, but we talking about this faith that have a lot to do with our customs. Everybody have custom. When you see certain people's dress, you know it's their custom. So customs don't alter the nature of truth, but it is the truth. The truth is the only thing that changes not. So here in the Morris Sign Temple of America, when we get our literature and thing, we don't have nobody to donate us no literature from a Saudi Arabia or none of those places. And you know what? We're still carrying it like Noble Jew Ali said. You have a lot of different organizations that still getting money from the European. You know, they don't care like the leaders of the past before them do. They done switched up. They done changed the concept. They done changed the curriculum. And you see a lot of that in the Morris Science Temple. When I first joined the Morris Sign Temple, certain things you see, now you see all kind of different signs and symbols. See, you'll see a lot of different signs and symbols because of the Berlin Conference. People can come in and do what they want to do. But me, I'm going to look straight ahead. You know, like that brother. And I'm not going to look no other way. But uh, in conclusion, uh, when we was talking about 3630, I'm going to have to get back into that next week because I just realized that my time is about up. And it's always an honor to come before our Portland listening audience here at Temple 2 to talk to you about some of the things that we learn, some of the things that we go through. And whenever a Moorish American greet anyone in the Moorish Science Temple, we greet each other in Islam and we leave each other in peace. Now, we don't greet each other with Islamism because Islamism is not a greeting. Islamism is our religion. So in conclusion, I would like to say the Moorish American prayer because the Moorish American prayer is a source from which we draw our strength. Allah, the father of the universe, the Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen. Wade in the water.